Hey everyone, welcome back to Masters of Brigitte Cast. Today we're going to be having a special guest on, Ash and Flash. Uh, you may or may not know him, I don't know. Uh, you know, he's a pretty cool guy though. And uh, yeah, so we're going to introduce the panel, I guess. And we're going to go uh, to Ashton. So um, but yeah, uh, take it away, Pin. Hi, I'm Pin. Hi everybody, glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here for this one. I've been a little off and on with the podcast but i'm here hello hi um yep you know me ninja whip uh chris go ahead <laughs> hey guys i'm chris uh aka legends and ninjago um i'm not gonna be talking a whole lot this podcast because your boy got a root canal today um so he's a little out of it but i wanted to be here just for uh camaraderie i guess so howdy welcome and i'm kyle aka deluxe collectibles uh excited to be here Absolutely. And then we have uh, Ashton Flash. What's up, man? Good to have you Hello. on here. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Yeah, I'm excited. I listened to the first one when it came up, and I was like, I want to get on this. And I've been telling Penn to tell you. And then it happened. And yes. uh, yeah, I'm here now. Very eager. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got you on, man, and we're happy to have you. And uh, yeah, we're going to ask you a few questions, and we're going to talk all about you. And um, your Lego grind, um, because you're popping off on the YouTube front, which is awesome. Uh, so congrats to you, man. And uh, yeah, man, Thank I you. guess we'll just jump right into it, bro. So um, uh, obviously, this may be an interesting question. And, and, you know, I guess people could like take it in different ways, considering um, your channel covers many different Lego themes. But uh, what is your like, you know, number one favorite theme and uh, why? I have to say Ninjago here, right? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, if you say anything, else, <laughs> you're gone. Um, I, yeah, I think uh, even though it's non-existent right now, I, I still go to uh, DC superheroes. Um, but uh, yeah, Marvel, Marvel's where it's at right now. I think, even though again, this seems to be a bit of a. I, I said this yesterday. Well, when I don't know when this is going up, but I said this in a video where I was like, "Yeah, they've kind of taken a step down." I feel like from last year. Um, and again, we haven't seen everything from the summer, or at least I hope. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. For their 10 years, it's a bit disappointing. But yeah, I've, uh, yeah, Superheroes is definitely the top thing. And I guess what I'm most known for, especially with the name Ash and Flash. So for sure, man. For sure. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You know, ultimately, I just, I, I, for some reason, with, you know, all the Marvel content that I see, I thought, like, Marvel would be your go-to. Is there any particular reason why, like, you like DC so much? Like, just out of curiosity? Uh, uh, that's a loaded question. Uh, I guess it was kind of what, I, I guess Spider-Man would have been, like, the first superhero that I might have known about. But I, I really got connected to Batman with um, the, I was, I've told the story a bunch of times, but I we were coming home from an amusement park here in Canada, Canada's Wonderland. And we went to Toys R Us and my parents were like, you can just like get any set, like within reason, like not a huge thing or anything. But right, I, right. I don't know. I was just kind of drawn to like the Batman section. There was this cool um, one with a car chase with Two-Face and, and the Batmobile. And I picked that and I literally didn't know much about Batman or anything. So I remember that kind of led to watching the movies and then that led to going to the library and renting Batman the Animated Series, and that just opened my my eyes to, like, the, the even crazier villains and things like that. And then two years later, um, they announced the video game, which was just insane and had all that stuff. Um, and then it went away. And then it came back in 2012 with uh, with Marvel and, and uh, the rest of the... Well, kind of. They also went away, I guess. But uh, with Superman and Wonder Woman and all that, so, yeah. I don't know. I feel more of a connection to them. I I prefer the characters, the stories, and all that. But yeah, sure. Not necessarily the movies, <laughs> but yeah, other media. <laughs> For sure. How man. you're feeling yeah. about like the disappearance of all those characters from Lego DC? Lego DC when it's kind of like evolving into just being Lego Batman. How how are you feeling about that current situation with that theme? Like how how are you feeling about that? uh heartbroken <laughs> um yeah no discouraging honestly uh just year after year of of this um at least like i look back to i guess the last good year i would say for dc was 20 was it 2019 with the the bat truck and all that 
at least they were, you know, bringing back characters that they hadn't done in a while with Batgirl, Nightwing. Even if it was tossing us a bone like Bronze Tiger, like at least it's a new character. Whereas in 2020, I think the only new character we got was Maxwell Lord, besides the minifigure series. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's sad. What would be sort of the things that you would do to change that up a bit? What would you want to see? Um, well, I I don't know. It's it's tough because I, I know that they don't sell as well as Marvel, and I can't be like, oh, just do these random obscure locations and things like that. Um, but just staying on top of at least the movies, I'd say, which it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. Um. So yeah, I don't know. That was their excuse last year was DC's not getting sets because uh, there's no movies coming out besides ones that are R-rated. And then here we are with Black Adam, The Flash, and DC Super Pets, and what else? Um, Aquaman, and I guess all things have been shifted around. But yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Didn't they all? Yeah, they all got delayed, didn't they? Uh, they all got shifted back, and then some swapped. So. Uh, I think for this year, it's it's still Black Adam, uh, or I guess the Super Pets is probably first, but I don't really expect sets for that. Um, that would be crazy if we got sets for the Super Pets, though. I think that'd be, <laughs> it'd be so wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Black Adam is first, and then... I don't know. I, I think I don't think there's another one this year, unless I'm completely forgetting. It's, it's Aquaman was shifted with Shazam, so now Shazam's coming out in December, and mm. Aquaman is coming out in March. So if there were sets for those two, I have no clue how that messes things up. But uh, And The Flash was supposed to come out in the summer, and now it's been delayed a whole year. So nothing. And it's, a, it's also a year for anniversaries. Uh, and again, we didn't know things about the fall, and that was when DC sort of, in, in quotations, shined last year. Um, so I hope that there's stuff. It's the 30-year anniversary for Batman the Animated Series, 30 years for Batman Returns. It's also... I don't expect them either. I think it's 10 years for the Arrowverse. Um, but uh, there's yeah. a lot of things here that uh, they love their anniversaries. Well, well. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Ninjago got theirs, so that's pretty good. That's yeah, that's all I care about. Ninjago <laughs> got theirs, so what about everybody else? Like, Doesn't Minecraft have an anniversary this year too? Yeah, they do. Yeah, it was first the Kusa project launched, but yeah, I, I don't know. It depends on what they go off of, but it, it definitely could as well. But uh, they're deciding yeah. to focus on 30 year, or not even, that's even more. What was it, 1992? Uh, so yeah, 30 year anniversaries for Paradisa, a theme that's been dead for who knows how long. So yeah, yeah. Wait, they're doing something for Paradisa? I mean, they just did a social post, but it's still oh. more than Marvel and dc got for their 10 year anniversary so. <laughs> i guess it's very you're gonna scare me a little bit like <laughs> i'm not up, i'm not up on news what <laughs> maybe that's a promo i don't know that'd be interesting that'd be hey weird. paradise is great i'm not trying to like hate on paradise but it's just not relevant now um so i i don't know i don't think it's either the big it's not as like it's no castle it's no you know i don't know it's no pirates or anything space and stuff like that so right looking the wrath of just too good here <laughs> he said what about Paradisa I think he'd be I more guess. mad if I went after Fabulan, but probably hey it's, it's getting yeah. acknowledged in that classic set so that is true that Fabulan is such a weird wall off the Paradisa wall didn't thing. get anything there nope hmm. not that I can recall no it didn't I would have remembered Belleville is though mm -hmm. Belleville huh. yeah there's a, there's a chariot Wow. Speaking of uh, of just too good, Ash, were there any like particular influences that sort of inspired you to pursue YouTube or start to do that? Um. So for Lego, yeah, it was definitely Justin. Um, he was a huge influence when it came to that. Um, just even like his new stuff, I remember watching it and telling people, especially when it came to Minecraft, because that was a uh, a big part of my high school was even just like the people that I hung out with just spending hours upon hours in the computer lab playing Minecraft. And I was like, look at this. Cause it was 2014. I'm like, look at these sets. And I try to convince them to, to get the minifigure scale ones. Um, it so he was the YouTuber called uh, press and plays. And um, yeah, he just posted Minecraft content. And I remember turning to my friend one day, I'm like, we're we're pretty good at Hunger Games. We, we should do a YouTube channel, and then we never did. But 
yeah he, he was a big influence i'd say that's really cool it's very interesting definitely definitely were you able to influence those friends to get the lego sets one of them he bought the farm uh and the 2014 tumblr which i didn't even get so mm, but i yeah. told him about it so yeah so when it comes to inspiration with just too good um uh, you worked with him for a little while too. Um, how, and that kind of springboarded the, the platform for you a little bit. Do you want to talk about some of the excitement from that time at all? That growth period for you on YouTube, because I know that's kind of before where you're at right now, but it was definitely a catapult to this point. Um, so it was, and I might get the dates wrong here, but I think it's it was five years ago that I posted the Disney minifigure series like a week ago. I think it was April 7th or something like that. So um, that was, I drew those, posted on Flickr, shared it on Eurobricks, I think Reddit as well maybe. And uh, I was like, oh my goodness, because it had like a viewership. It's like it had a thousand views or something like that. I'm like, this is crazy. And I was just like so excited about that on Flickr. And um I just enjoyed, so it came about of just, I had this project when I was in school and they were like, um, they were like, you need to fill a sketchbook with literally anything. So the Disney series had come out and I was like, hmm, I want to draw Goofy specifically. So I drew that all and, um, and then that did well. Uh, and I enjoyed that. So I was like, you know what, let's just do three. And then, um, yeah. I had uh, some stuff happen in my personal life that I just kind of stopped and then I picked back up I think it was around June and I did like Disney series 4 and then I started like branching out doing other things um and it was actually the a series that I did of I I remember writing Justin I don't remember exactly when but I was like hey he did this video of a Nintendo CMF series and he sort of just pitched like what he would want to see in Nintendo series. And I had been drawing them like, hey, like if you want, I'd love to draw them and make these things like become real. And he's like, okay, like I'll get back to you. And I did a series of the Oscars. And then um, I think it was like the 50th. No, it couldn't have been more than that. Anyways, uh, so I did that series and that was the one that he like immediately he said afterwards he messaged me like we need to like let's work on this and we did a nickelodeon series and yeah i don't know how many other series after that um some of them getting like millions of views on youtube with fortnite and spider-verse and marvel and things like that awesome. um and uh, i guess how did that influence me i so i was posting one instagram and then um, that's what he saw. And then he was mentioning that at the end of his videos. And then at one point, people were like, you, sh you should start YouTube. And I was like, okay. And I started a YouTube channel uh, in June of 2018. And I posted the Incredibles minifigure series. And that uh, sort of, yeah, it all started there. That's awesome. Congratulations on that, man. Yeah, thank that's you. Real. It's crazy to look back. It feels... Some days like yesterday, and other days it feels like so long ago. Mm hmm. I can imagine. And the pioneer in the whole minifigure art scene, and now just seeing how prevalent it is, I, I that, that's kind of on you. <laughs> it's, For sure. it's impressive to see just how prevalent that's become. It's exciting, especially within the superhero side of things. Like, there's a lot of people who focus on that specifically and then eventually start branching out, and it's always incredible how far they go. Just yeah, based I, on the inspiration of that. I love to see it. It makes me really happy. And I love, um, yeah, I just love to see that uh, that it's become that. And uh, I love getting tagged on things as well and all that stuff of, you know, of varying skill levels. Just the fact that there's people now saying the things that, like, like I had said to Justin or other people like that. That's, that's crazy to me. With your minifigure series... Uh, is there a particular one that sort of stands out for you, just one amongst all of the countless ones that you've made that you just have a real special place for? Uh, again, I'm really, I really love DC, so those are sort of the ones that are my go-to of, like, of really important to me. So the Arkham one and the Batman the Animated Series one are probably the ones that are my favorites. Um, but I really love a lot of the, I, as much as I was tired of them towards the end, I really loved the Fortnite ones. Those first few ones of doing all that was really, uh, really special to me. 
that's really cool. Yeah, I know your your Arkham and animated series ones are like videos I remember like rewatching over and over because that's just I mean two series that I just really enjoy. Yeah, yeah, those are my faves. Because I'm legally required to um, <laughs> ask about Ninjago, um, because my name is Legends of Ninjago. Um, I'll ask you about your fondest memory of said theme. I saw that question. I was trying to think of of. <laughs> of the answer to that you cheated um, i did um I, it, it's tough i have a couple different ones i remember when the theme first was revealed um and i remember really wanting them uh but i don't know sometimes i look back and i have regrets of like mm, should have bought this shouldn't have bought that um it's tough i i do kind of wish that i had gotten ninjago although even if I had started that year in 2011 when they were first revealed, I would have probably dropped it all for superheroes the following year because I couldn't have done both. I wasn't even wow. like I, I I dropped Star Wars and that's really what got me into Lego in the first place since um, 2000 and like one or two. Um, so when superheroes came out, I literally just I everything went into that. Um, so yeah. Uh, that, but I think one of my fonder memories of Ninjago would be when I would go to the U.S. because I didn't have uh, cable or anything, and I remember watching it. That in Clone Wars, I remember watching on like the Cartoon Network, um, the latest stuff. But I would still keep up with it online and watch all the um, new sets and things like that. And then the Ninjago movie is really, really big to me too. Really, did you like yeah. it? <laughs> I I I I that, see the first episode of this podcast. You guys were talking about that, and I was like, I want to be in a discussion about the movie and and all the good and the bad about it. But uh, I really love it. I think it's really funny, and wow. um, yeah, the the theme is spectacular. Um, oh yeah, I agree. It's they have some really great sets. You'll have to come on with us when we do our big Ninjago movie uh, thing because uh, yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get it's gonna get crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be I'd be really interested in that in that conversation just because I feel like since the movie came out, my like when I first watched it, I was so disappointed. Um, but then going mm. back over the last couple of years, I've kind of changed my opinion about it a little bit. Well, actually, a lot, a lot of it to the point where I own a steel book of it now. So wow, <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen that happen. I I've tried to really convince people to go and watch that, and I I've said. Um, because that was a lot of people's first time, I think, also hearing just about Ninjago in general. Yep. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember in 2014, um, and I, again, something I've said a lot was pre 2014, pre Lego Movie. I remember like not necessarily being ashamed, but like trying to hide like my my love for Lego. But I remember when that movie came out in February 2014, and people watched that. There was, so, and they knew that I liked Lego. There were so many people that came up to me. And we're talking to me like that was a fantastic movie, and the perception of Lego completely switched. Of like, this isn't necessarily just a kids thing. Like this, this, like this is genuinely really cool. So for them to do that, well, attempt to do it, I guess for Ninjago, um, <laughs> I, I really uh, that was really special. And again, like so many people that I knew still watched them all, and that was their first like interactions with Ninjago. So yeah, that's awesome. Very nice. I remember, remember the day taking my friends to uh, the original Lego movie as well, and they were just kind of like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, it's going to be fine. But then we ran into friends there who were going to see the new 300 movie, and they were kind of like, oh dang, we're not going to see 300, that's a bummer. But then they came out of Lego movie, and they were just completely just stunned by how much they enjoyed it, just because yeah. of all that went into it and how amazing it looked, and the story actually being endearing and fun and it actually being funny helped a lot. Yeah. And I will never forget that feeling of like, wow, everybody's liking this. That's great. And then, well, well we're here now. How popular yeah. has Lego become? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I would be curious. Like, I know that like COVID um, definitely kind of sparked like a, a, a Lego movement if you will for for people that were stuck in quarantine and went to quarantine but like i'd be mm -hmm. curious to see if like the lego movie didn't exist what kind of world we live in like would the lego the lego revolution still happen or you know maybe they like oh like i want to go build lincoln logs or something like that because 
in this alternate universe, Lincoln Logs did a movie. <laughs> we wouldn't have the emoji movie, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> That's for sure. <laughs> we wouldn't yeah. have as many of these that look at all the stuff we own movies either. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Warner's done that multiple times now, both with Lego and with Space Jam. So you know. Uh, so Ash, since you tend to focus on license yeah. themes with those sets. Maybe beyond, do you feel the minifig is underutilized in sets or overutilized? I know that with some people we've asked this before, their focus tended to be on Star Wars and how they balance that out. But I know that with superheroes, it can be interesting too, because there's a lot of repetitious minifigures too. How do you yeah, think? Um, it's, it, it depends on the set. Like I, I look at like the Thor's hammer and that's like, I don't know, it's, it's such a, it was such a, surprise like such a treat to have that included there um whether or not that remains exclusive which i don't think it will it was still really cool um but yeah even looking at and this is a conversation that i've had with pen and uh ninja whip i've said like with the evil wave i just you know i needed more i needed more with those other sets um to interest me uh that that and i get like with ninjago sometimes when it comes to like the waves like the enemies and things will just be repeated and things like that but i don't know i need like a main villain or something like that to intrigue me even with like this march wave with what was it called the training the, the training dojo expansion or whatever it was like they just threw zane in there and and we didn't yeah. get the evo version of him and we didn't get Cole either but I don't know it's things like that where it's important to me otherwise I would have skipped out on it and uh, to talk about Marvel as well I know when I was a kid specifically looking at the the Batman uh, the original waves I wouldn't get sets like in 2007 and 2008 like I skipped out on sets because I already had these characters I'm like I literally am only getting this for the minifigures so today, I guess to answer the question, I think they are being underutilized in some sets um, because they just seem to be like putting in the same figures over and over again. Like that Spider-Man versus uh, Green Goblin mech. It's like we already have these figures and yeah, I don't know. I don't think they're using it to its fullest potential there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. I agree. Um, so say with a set like that, in the event that it was the same Spider-Man but a different Goblin, do you think mm. feel like you would kind of feel a bit different? Because technically, that is Spider-Man, and it would need Spider-Man. But then, of course, there's that lingering feeling in the background of your head where it's just like, this could have been any other variant of Spider-Man, too. Do you think that you would have been contented if at least one of them was different? Yes, oh, absolutely. I, I also think that the... like the year before one is probably that one's fault like i can't really fault this one because it's based off of like the show or whatever it is that they're doing this multimedia push for these mechs and spider-man has this mech um and then the green goblin one actually isn't a mech it's more of like an extension of him so i think that that was really cool and unique whereas the year before like yeah that doc ock one is phenomenal but that spider-man could have been anything but the regular spider-man um and especially because they claim to be doing it for the, the kid collector as an ex kid collector, I know that I would have passed on both those sets because I would have probably already had those figures. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. I know that with the case uh, of Ninjago and such, it's like the draw is always new minifigures, but then we sit here going, like, do we want new minifigures of these or do we want minifigures of these? And it's always this kind of mm -hmm. standstill of like, where where would we go from here with what we want? Because we're both wanting both of these things. And um, the scuba Nia. How many sets was she in? One, 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 one right? The big one, the Hydra Bunny. Yep, yeah, correct. Like yeah. Always. So I I probably would have been much less intrigued to buy that set if it wasn't for her. And having an really? exclusive figure in that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would, would you count the Wu bots though? I mean. I mean, yeah, I guess that too, but uh, now they're in the other ones, the, uh, the uh, yeah. combo mech. But yeah, that was a big draw was, I was like, well, I kind of want all the ninja in their scuba suits, and she's in that set. And, also the uh, thing with Evo too, right? I mean, like, most, most if not all of those figures are reused, and like, especially with the Lloyd's Legendary Dragon, I just, mm -hmm. 
you know, minifigures for me as a kid was a really big appeal. So, like, seeing the Lloyd's Legendary Dragon, as awesome as that set is, I think this, the dragon is fantastic. A great dragon. But it just lacks in the minifigures. The minifigures, to me, are really, really boring. And it just sucks. Because it would have been awesome to, like, throw in, like, an exclusive minifigure in that set. And yeah. if, especially for the price. I mean, you're paying, what, $60? Se- oh, excuse me, seventy dollars for that set, and you're getting those minifigures. Really? Like, I don't know. I didn't really like the minifigures in that set personally, but I, I thought the build was great. Again, but it's just the minifigures, man. Like, this could have been a lot easier, and, and that goes for a, a most, if not a lot, of the Evo sets as well. You know, so unless there was um like a build that I really loved, I guarantee you. Let's say that if I wasn't into superheroes, I was into Ninjago. Uh, and I was, a, mm-hmm. if I was a kid, same mentality. If I saw that that big dojo set, because I love play sets, yeah, connected with the other small one. I know it's, it's a hated set. Uh, <laughs> uh, if if I saw that, and the fact that you get the complete set of ninja, which also kind of hi- hypocritical to what I said before about wanting is an exclusive Zane, but it's really cool that they thought that through and was like, here's the full cast of characters if you just buy these two sets and you get everything. I really love yeah. the thought process of that. And then I compare that to the Thor Love and Thunder sets with this horrible, small-looking, weird monster thing and yeah, the three all. figures all come in a better set with yeah. other exclusive figures. So to me, I, I know that I... Again, I wasn't like I didn't have a lot of money, like I was saying before. Like I missed out on a lot. I wasn't buying multiple themes back then. I know mm-hmm. that I would have saved up all my money to buy the goat boat versus spending it on this twenty dollar set with the other. Sure, so. sure, yeah, yeah. That that oof, that set is um man, oh man. It looks <laughs> like, like I don't know if you know this, but it kind of looks like the guy from. It looks like Ickis from All Real Monsters. That's what it reminds me of so much. Like it's oh man. That uh, that, that set is that is not good at all. And the minifigures, like, I guess, like, I guess that they kind of made it mostly like for the kids, right? Like, it's like, oh, you know, the kids that want a cheap twenty dollar little set to get Thor and Mighty the Thor. Pocket change kids. But we've yeah, yeah, exactly. seen uh, other toys doing other characters. I, I won't say what, but there's some other, like, even another variant for Thor that it's like mm-hmm. that should have been what this set is. Um, yeah, and yeah, I just, no, I agree. Yeah, not a fan. Could have been a lot cooler, um, especially in that regard, like including a different Thor at least, or uh, just you know. Yeah. But I mean, like, how how is that? That's at twenty dollars. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so three minifigures for twenty dollars, I guess, isn't too terrible, especially for a Marvel set with the level of detail that uh, the, the Thor at least has. I guess, like, mm-hmm. it's not too terrible. But I mean, like, yeah, I it's agree in a sense. Right, right. It's the same as the other one. And the other one is so much cooler. It comes with really other, like, I mean, it comes with that exclusive Korg, which is awesome. And I think that Valkyrie is also exclusive as well. Yep. New so, um, hair, I believe, as hair well. Hairpiece. Yeah, so, new uh, hairpiece. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, well, they they missed an opportunity with that, uh, in yeah. my opinion. I suppose yeah. with using Evo as an example, um, having three opportunities to get the minifigures would have probably been smart, where it's like, one set has a unique version of the character, and then there's an affordable way to get the and a plain version of that character, and then the big set includes that character as well. So it's like if you go the, the expensive direction, you get them all. If you go the cheap direction, you get them all. But also there are uh, affordable to mid range sets that have a unique minifigure in there as well, or maybe one of that maybe that big set has a unique minifigure in there, too, of any of these characters. And having that sort of balance might make people feel a little bit better about the minifigure balance, I suppose. Or if mm-hmm. you're going to go with generic characters as a as a troop to fight against a trooper, then you might as well have multiples of them, but also like give some variances with like a named character or something. It's I've always noticed that there's kind of been an issue in finding that balance of like, let's just cram all this in there or literally just put this character in one singular set. And it's always strange, more or less strange choices as opposed to very deliberate and exciting choices. I know with even, and you, I don't know what you guys talk about here on the channel, leak wise or rumor wise, but even looking ahead to the summer um, with the idea that there is these, like there's an exclusive ninja in each of these sets I would have eaten that up as a kid, and I would have had to buy them all. I would have needed to get them all, just like last year with the legacy, uh, the, right. the the golden figures. Like that's that that's what sells me on it. 
the Eva yeah. wave. I, it, it's just, I don't know. I would have passed on so many of them if I was as, as if I was a kid. kid. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Uh, you know, as a kid, I collected the minifigures really heavily, so I, I, a lot of those sets, like I probably would have done, um, you know, the the Dojo Temple and the uh, other one, the the Ninja uh, the Spinjitzu Ninja Training Center, if it had mm. come out the same time as that the Dojo too. Temple. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I mean, I would have just done that, got all the ninja, and been happy because you know, at the time, I just really wanted to collect all the ninja, um, you know, and, and then like you said, and I grew up with the same way. I didn't really have a lot of money as a kid, uh, especially for spending on Lego. So, um, you know, a quick way to get the minifigures was the the best way, and that would have been probably the best way to do that. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so. But yeah, uh, jumping into another question. This would have been one that Ace would have asked, but he isn't here today. So uh, <laughs> this would be interesting. Have you uh, at all considered uh, dabbling into the Monkey Kid theme at all? Uh, I cover it every time that it's revealed. Nice. For me, I, I, the play sets are where it's at. I don't need another mech, another car. <laughs> I just don't yeah. have this space. Um, sure. And it... Uh, yeah, no, it's a great theme for sure. I I try my best to get all the villains, especially because they're listed on bricks and pieces as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have like the Spider Queen coming from Denmark soon as well. Um, nice. Things like that. So yeah, to me, it's it's all about like these figures and like the play sets. Like I I went and got the uh oh what's it called? I'm blanking on the name. This the lantern. The lantern. Oh, uh, the city of lantern. City of city lantern. Of yeah. yeah, I absolutely went and grabbed that, and uh, even the the flower fruit mountain. I got that yes. land last year. That's just a nice. spectacular set. That, yeah, they're so expensive, but that's another thing with that theme. It's they're really expensive, but those play sets I feel like are definitely worth whatever price they they throw on it. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say you were talking about like having to like manage sort of your space uh, in regards to getting sets. How do you go about that with like when you're getting all these sets, are there previous ones where you decide to take them apart or build them into a mock or like how do you deal with that space wise? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I definitely don't have like I look back at I guess if you look at the last 10 years of superheroes, I think the things that I have still built are uh ironically the vehicles because i've just thrown them into a bin and not really thought about it whereas the play sets i'm like well these are really cool and i'll like make my own joker land and i'll make my own arkham and things like that so all that's been torn apart um but in terms of space i i'm not the person to be asking this question to uh i've got things just yeah just it's it's not good um especially with all the things that i'm getting like i i, I wouldn't have gotten all these jurassic world sets but uh, here I am reviewing them all, so I have to find a home for those, and um, yeah, now that I'm, you know, in a place again, like I was talking about before, I'm, I'm in a place that I can buy Star Wars again alongside with superheroes and and then um, other themes that I have to collect too. It's it's uh, it's never ending, <laughs> except the space, that that is ending, so I, I, yeah, I don't know, I'm not the person to ask that to, I guess. Yeah, I've seen, like, um, I've watched whenever you've done, like, a setup tour, and I think, like, your setup's pretty good, honestly, considering, like, the amount that you have, I think you have a good way of, like, managing all of it, so I don't think it looks too bad, at least from what I've seen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't show it when it's at its worst, I'd say, like, right now, I, I, I'm literally reaching over, because I still want to do, like, a compilation of all the Jurassic World sets, and I don't have them all yet. Otherwise, I would put them away. But I'm like reaching over as I record. So I sure I'm sure I sound different as well. Versus if you watch like the first Jurassic World one versus the other one, where I'm like leaning out of breath, like just on my tippy toes, trying to reach over everything. So yeah, it's not good. It's not good. All that set build up. It's just like it's hard to weave through at some point or another. I can fully understand that, especially if you're someone who favors having a display set up. It can be, you'll set up one thing and realize, oh, I shouldn't have set that up first. Yeah I'm, always yeah, I'm always told, like, from family members that they sometimes watch the videos. They're like, I saw you got this. Where are you going to put it? I'm like, I still have room. I'm just not using it. I know I'm not using it to the optimal, like, um, I, I'm just not using it to the best of its abilities. Uh, like, I still have 
shelves that are just kind of uh, like they have stuff that I've just brought down from when I moved down to the basement. Like it, it's just not being used uh, the best that it could be. And that's on me for choosing to do other things. But yeah. Ash and I have a mutual who tends to chastise me for building anything because apparently he thinks I have no room. So it's been, I, I continuously keep getting nagged about that and thinking, wait, what if I do change some things up? Hmm. But then I'm sitting around, nah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Double down. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I was going to ask, this isn't even Lego related. It's Flash related. Do you still keep up with the Flash show? I was curious about that. I have had moments of drop off because that's where the name came from was I, I, I had seen this show. I, I, sorry, I had seen the Flash and other things and I... I had somewhat liked him, but it was in 2014 and the show had just started out. And I, um, yeah, I really loved the show and I kind of just realized that my name, uh, the the Ash a part of Rhymed with Flash, and I put those two together and that's where the name came from. Um, so I have dropped off the show multiple times, come back for crossovers and things like that. But <laughs> I am on top of things. I just haven't seen this week's episode. I am on top of things uh when it comes to the flash now that's the only one though um everything else i have either lost interest in or just like i want to it's just i just haven't done it yet that's really impressive i was like a big fan of the flash show too and i think i ended up dropping off at maybe the end of season six i think it was and i tried keeping okay that's longer yeah. than most <laughs> <laughs> yeah i tried to hold in there for a while because i was interested in like the wider like Arrowverse, like the legend show the arrow mm. um and i collect like physical media so i was buying the seasons whenever they would release it but yeah. at a certain point i was just like i don't i don't know if i can keep up with this so now i'm just so far <laughs> behind <laughs> yeah no it there's see there's moments in every season i'm like mm, like the show's actually good like there's still good moments of heart and 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 stuff like that and then there's other moments where we're having lightsaber fights and i just uh, questioning why i'm still watching the show um so yeah yeah it makes it really funny uh not keeping up with the show now to see uh like the out of context clips now like i've seen the like see yeah like things, the yeah. lightsaber fight things and i'll see that and i'll be like what like what are they doing in the show <laughs> Oh, that man, being yeah. said, Superman and Lois, uh, although I haven't seen the second season, I, I, I really great, completely different than any of the other ones. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, I've heard all good things for that. I really like the uh, like the animated DC stuff, like the movies, the shows mm -hmm. for that. The movies are great too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's great. Um, uh, Pen, did you have another question you weren't going to ask before we wrap up? Yeah, there's just one more question that we have here that I was very curious to ask you. If you were to introduce a Ninjago fan to both superheroes themes and Minecraft, because I know that you do really like that a lot, uh, what's a set from each that you would recommend to them that isn't a D2C set? Well, Minecraft, it's easy. I guess I'd say the the village, uh, the Illager raid, because it has Kai in it. Um, hey! Nice. But um, no, I think the best Minecraft starter set, and it's is a little overpriced, but the first adventure set just gives you such a great experience of like even just playing the game. Like, just there's some features in there that is just so smart, like lava flowing through the wall. Like, out of uh, the I guess now ten years of the theme, like it is the best. Like, it's just such an incredible play feature. There's other things like that in that set. It, it's just so fun um i'd recommend that and any of any of these ones honestly from the january wave i just think they're all really stellar that 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 theme excuse me is just it's it's what i wish every theme did where i i always i use like more of like an art analogy of like it's pushing the portfolio forward like it's just expanding its portfolio of look at this and they're filling out all these missing things from minecraft even last summer they went back to like things that we had been missing from i don't know how long ago um so it's really great to see that and i guess with superheroes i don't know that's a bit of a tough question i'm trying to think i i guess if i had to pick one the goat boat i i although i haven't posted the review or anything but this is probably going up way past that um the goat boat is is a fantastic fantastic set i think um uh, 
yeah, that's going to interest a lot of people, not just Marvel fans. What about Ninjago? If I had to pick a starter set for Ninjago, mm -hmm. um, hmm, so non DTC, I, I guess I would I'd go with the Dojo from January. I that oh, that wow. set is amazing. I need to. I have the old Dojo from Legacy, but I want to put this new one up because I just I really think it's it's so beautiful. I, I really yeah. want to put that up. Yeah, it's a cool one. Um, and I almost forgot to ask one last question. We usually mm -hmm. ask all of our guests, like at the end, our last question. Uh, if you could go back in time and get one Lego set of your choice, uh, what set would that be and why? Oh, uh, <laughs> this is so tough because there's yes. so many that comes to mind, especially because I did stop collecting Star Wars. Ah. Uh, I don't know. The one that always pops into my mind is Jebba's Palace. Um, Wait, which one? 2003 or 2013? I have the 2003 one. So that, oh, I love that um, one. That was one of my first Star Wars sets. But uh, nice. I see I'd need the Rancor Pit, so I'm only allowed to pick one. So I guess I'd go with Jebba's oh. Sail Barge. Uh, nice. Probably to get that all. Yeah, that'd be I wanted favorite. that one so bad as a kid. Like the, I think it came out because I was really big into Star Wars around the early two thousands, uh, mm -hmm. and then I got and then I dropped off as soon as Ninjago came on. I came came out, but uh, <laughs> you know, I really wanted that two thousand. I, I think it was eight or seven. I think, Java yeah, Sail Barge. Um, God, I wanted that so bad. I, oh man. I yeah, I helped a friend build that. He didn't. He didn't want to build it. I'm like, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> he, he he just wanted the minifigures, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, all he cared about. Figured. Well, um, yeah, there's no more other questions than uh, Ashton. Thank you so much for uh, coming on here, man. I really appreciate it. It's been uh, great to talk to you um, and have you on the podcast. Uh, we'll definitely have you on again, uh, especially if you're, like, you're interested in doing that movie uh, thing. I think that'd be a lot of fun to have. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah different perspectives on that but uh but yeah everyone thank you so much for for watching uh, the masters of brigitte Brit uh brigitte cast goodness gracious uh with ash and flash uh so yeah that's uh, all from us and uh see you guys uh in the next one bye everyone <laughs>